Welcome back to Twin Cities Live. There are a lot of myths in the world, my friends. Like George Washington never had wooden teeth. When he took his oath of office, he wore a special set of dentures and they were made from ivory, brass, and gold. Wait, I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't, it, if it was written here, then it's 100% It is 100% true. Yeah. Okay, but what about the myths of selling a home? Well, there's quite a lot of them, so we're gonna figure it out. So Julie and Dale and DeRoche of DeRoche Realty Group and EXP Realty are here with us today to do some myth Bust. Oh, How are friends. you guys? Good. Good. Can't get my mind off wooden teeth. Yeah, right now. now we distracted you. That's what we do. Yeah, I swear to goodness that that's a real thing. Okay, obviously not. It's 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 written down on paper in front of us. So on we're going with it. It's just like, yeah, if it's on the internet, then it's true. Okay, so the first myth is when selling a home, you should leave room for negotiations. Daniel, do you think this is right or not? A lot of people are probably told this. Yeah, I think a lot of people are because uh, a lot of Realtors will tell sellers, you know, pick what price you want and we can adjust down accordingly and stuff. No, it, we, we truly believe you need to be as accurate as possible. And we're big fans of round numbers too. Like if, if all the research, all the data, like do the research, do the data, look at what's truly selling. Mm -hmm. No, get me wrong, some homes are harder to price than others. But if everything points towards 500 grand and you go list at 540 and everybody else is looking at 500, they're missing you. Mm -hmm. So you have, and being at, like round numbers, people do search in round numbers. Like if somebody's gonna search, like don't list at 499.9, list at 500 even, because people don't stop their search at 499.9. Right. And if you're at 500 even, you're capturing both sides of the search. The people that are searching to 500, and the people searching from 500 to 600. Or okay, never yeah. thought of that. That's yeah. so smart. But that makes a lot of sense because I actually, I think it's annoying. When we were like looking for a cabin, I hated the idea that there were people would list it at, at 99. I'm like, just round up a dollar. <laughs> I know. Like, what? Well, I you're, not, about you're not fooling me. <laughs> no. Like, you're, you're, you're not making Walmart. me feel like, oh, good. <laughs> Boy, I thought I was going to spend a lot of money in this place, but it's actually just, just below my threshold. Be accurate. You have to be accurate. Okay. Plain simple. That's good. Okay. Um, all right. How about uh, Zillow says my home is worth 650. So it must be. Is that Truly. right? I mean, when everybody goes on, yeah, everybody goes on, and the they're going to look at their the zestimate. Yes. yes, I mean, they think like the zestimate is like you know the Bible of yeah. what your uh, home is worth. <laughs> so, so it's, it's not. not. It's, it's not, not a problem. No. What is it? No. So um, it's like an algorithm, and it's proprietary. So we don't actually even know exactly what they're looking at, but they're pulling things like tax records, um, you know. Area so sales, that kind of thing. Like but comps? Comps, yeah, but Zillow's never been in your home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how upgraded it is inside. They're yeah. not even taking into account, like, I'll have people that'll show up at their house and they'll be like, it's worth 550 And it's like, well, you back up to train tracks, though. Mm. Maybe if you didn't back up to train tracks, but there's so many things that go into pricing a home that a computer just can't generate a number for. It would be great if that were the case. Yeah. Well, think but about some of the big reality. upgrades, not or updates. Yep. Windows, roof, HVAC. Mm. It doesn't take any of that into account. Sure. Good landscaping, bad landscaping. You get a hundred grand difference just in quality and style of windows and shingles yeah. versus your neighbor. That's thousands of that dollars. In okay, so what do you want people to do? Just like not even think about this estimate? Don't even think about it. Don't even think, Don't about, even think it. about it. No. No. Really? Mm -mm. Is it really hard for people to, to wrap their head around that when you come in and say like, and they would say, oh, my house I saw in Zillow, it's 700000 and you're like, no, it's not, X, Y, and Z. Do, are they like staunch about that or they actually I, understand once you, where you once guys we sit down from? and explain it to them they, yeah. they can and you could I mean like if you had let's say a townhouse in a development where all the townhomes were finished kind of the same yeah. and all that you could maybe use that as a little guideline okay. to base it off of but don't think that that's where you're going to list your house and where you're going to get an offer at. And it can be off both ways. Both it could ways. be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent yeah. high yeah. or way low. We've had we had it too one, low. We had that's one what this I year. Think mine is. <laughs> 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 they haven't been inside. Well, I, you know, they could watch it on TV. It's the range true. I put it. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on to another myth. Earnest money is non-refundable after the purchase agreement is signed. Daniel, you can it, get it, that earnest money back? It could be non-refundable depending on the contingencies, but most offers are going to have a fine financing contingency, so subject to the buyer getting a loan for that house. They're already approved for a mortgage, but they're not pre-approved for the mortgage sure. until oh. your house passes the appraisal. Right. So usually the earnest money is refundable on that. Not always, but usually. Home inspections. Most offers have a home inspection. The whole point behind the inspection contingency is if you're not happy with the inspection, you get your earnest money back. Right. So more often than not, it's pretty protected, but if in a, in a cash, no inspection offer, Usually your earnest money is non-refundable, but there's things we can put in a purchase agreement that makes it, you know, within 10 days of closing, it becomes non-refundable or something like that to give the buyers or the sellers comfort to pack and move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
those those inspections can be very tricky, mm -hmm. very so, tricky. And it's yeah. a fail safe in Minnesota. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. Okay, so the the as is, like selling your home as is. Some people say you can sell your home as is. What are your thoughts on this, Julie? Um, if you if you really need to, you can sell it as is. Okay. If you can't do anything to the house, but you are going. You just have to understand you're going to get a lot less for the property. All right. So and I. And it's little things like um, painting, carpet. I meet with a lot of people and like for this instance, for this house, really bold, <gasps> bold colored walls. Beautiful. And you get a lot of feedback from sellers going, well, aren't the buyers going to want to come in and pick their own color? Right. What if I painted gray and they wanted brown walls? I, I, I guarantee you the, the buyer's not going to come in and want to keep those walls. Right. And it's going to affect the way they look at the house. Mm -hmm. So that changes the feeling of the room completely. Because they're adding up projects that they have to exactly. do. And yes. it's inevitably going to be things that they're going to want to change. Correct. You don't want to add to that list when you're trying to sell. Right. right. So you want to take as much cash that they're going to have to put into the house off of the, they're going to, they would rather pay more for the house. Yeah then have to come up with the cash to do all those fixes I and updates. I get that, yeah. and make the calls, and get the right. painter, yeah, and all that stuff. So is there sort of a percentage cap that you should you should tell sellers and say, okay, you need to upgrade your home, but maybe not above up above, above this percentage number? It just really depends on like the house and the area. So we're looking at, again, like in the beginning, the comps. So what does your comp competition look like, mm -hmm. and what do we have to do to get you better or as least as good as your competition? Okay. So. It may vary. It's good advice. Look at that. But the thing is, if you work with these guys, then when they say you need to put new carpet in upstairs before you sell, Julie will be like, I've got the guy. I already picked out your carpet for you. He's coming over next week. And I'm like, boom, that's <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as you guys can make it super easy, yeah, yeah, I'm, get it I'm done. all in. That's right. how they roll. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> all right. Julie and Daniel and the team at DeRoche Realty Group and EXP Realty can help you buy, sell, or even just build your home. Their contact information is on TwinCitiesLive.com. Okay.